if you could take one guy to an island with you and you knew you'd be safe because he was the best man, he was going to keep you happy, if it was between me and your father, who would you take? My daddy. I don't think you're wrong about that. Where did this film come from and how did it, how did it become, how did Ken get involved? Basically it was an idea that Matt and John Krasinski were kicking around for Matt to direct and when the idea sort of crystallized, Matt thought Kenny would be great to write it. They'd worked together on some plays uh, that Kenny had done and, and Matt and John pitched it to Kenny and he liked it and really turned it into his own movie. What were some of the influences and some of the elements you brought to the film and, and, and what were things that you maybe were challenges? To start off, the biggest challenge was the snow. It was the huge blizzard in Boston in 2015. So I think when Chris and I showed up for the first scout, we couldn't go anywhere. That's true. But the town itself and kind of immersing myself and my crew in Manchester out on Cape Ann is what really, meeting those folks, the locals, is what influenced the film the most. I think the idea was that you would relocate. R relocate to where? Well, if you Here? look, it's it, well as you can see, you know, your brother worked everything out extremely carefully. Uh, but both, he can't have, yes, he can't uh, have meant that. How did you assemble this cast? And and was Casey always the person after Matt decided not to get a, not to star? Was he was Casey always the one you were going to go with? You know, we've been big believers in Casey since Good Will Hunting. I mean, he's very very talented and can embody a character like nobody I've ever seen. When you look at the film now, it's completed. What do you see? Where do you see? Where do you see the challenges? Where do you see this film? Was that the film you thought you guys were going to make? Well, it's sure along the lines of what we hope to make. I mean, I think Kenny really is one of the greatest writers alive today about interpersonal relationships. He's just a master at it. And it's very simple. It's incredibly honest. And, you know, Kenny says, and he said in the press that, you know, I wanted to make a movie. Tragedy happens to people. It happens to people more often than we'd like to admit. And, you know, there's a cliche, it's called the Hollywood ending. And the truth of the matter is, a lot of people don't actually have the Hollywood ending. You know, tragedy hits you, and sometimes you don't come all the way out. And, and Kenny really wanted to make a movie about those people and for those people. And it affects multiple people when somebody goes through a tragedy. You don't just go through a tragedy all by yourself. And so I think he really captured the sort of ripple effect of a tragedy and one brother's attempt to get his brother out of that funk that he had fallen into. And I think it's the most one of the most honest movies I've ever been around. There's plenty of toilets and clogged up drains all over town. I don't want to All my friends are here. I'm on the hockey team. I'm on the basketball team. I got to maintain our boat now. I work on George's boat two days a week. I got two girlfriends, and I'm in a band. You're a janitor in Quincy. What the hell do you care where you live? Talk about a little bit about what it was like on day-to-day -day on the set and trying to create the look in the f of the film that you guys were aiming for. I think the, the biggest thing we were constantly um, striving to do was create authenticity for Casey to exist, his character. There's so many moments and, and that he and Kenny wanted that were even when there wasn't speaking, and it was how do you create those spaces to be real and not contrived? And uh, I think that was the biggest challenge of always scaling back and just letting the actual physical town be a character next to Casey. 